Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We are getting an early start on today's video because it is actually pretty nice and cool out right now. But you guys, this week we are pretty much under a heat advisory for the entire week. I think the next seven or eight days, with the exception of today, uh, we are forecasted to have temperatures over 100 degrees. With the heat indexes, we're going to be well in the 105 plus category probably almost every day this week. We're also going through a, a pretty bad drought here in our area. We're going to talk to you guys more about that as we move on with this video. But we don't want to focus just on the negatives. Today we want to focus on some good things that are going on. In our last video, we showed you guys a full tour of everything that was going on with the gardens and the greenhouse and everything else. Today, we want to do the same thing with animals. We're going to go around, we're going to show you a full tour of what's happening with the animals here on the homestead and how this drought is kind of affecting them. We're going to do that with our morning chores. So let's just get started doing chores. Good morning, piglets. So we're going to start today with our pigs. We've got a lot of pigs on the homestead right now. This is a litter that will actually be going to new homes. Most of them will be going to new homes this uh, coming weekend. This is Linda's litter of piglets. They're seven and a half weeks old right now. We're going to feed them first. All of the castrated males will be going to new homes this weekend, which is six of these piglets. The females we're going to hang on to for just a little bit longer so we can evaluate them to see which ones can be sold as breeder quality females. But you can see that they are growing really, really well. Now, even though we're in a drought, uh, we did get a little bit of rain late yesterday evening. Not much, it rained for maybe a half hour to an hour. I would guess if I had to guess, maybe a quarter inch tops of rain, but at least it's enough to kind of keep some of the dust down this morning. So you might notice that it doesn't look super dusty in here. Uh, that's actually a very good thing. All right, let's move on. The next litter we're gonna feed is Donna's litter of piglets. Good morning, piglets. Now all of the male piglets out of this litter will also be going to new homes this weekend as well. Uh, these two litters are only about four days apart in age, so they were able to all be weaned at the same time and all will be going into their new homes at the same time. All right, you can hear that all of our sows are excited for breakfast. So let's move over and feed all of the sows. Well, good morning, girls. Is everybody hungry for breakfast this morning? You are? There you go, Ginger. Right now, because Donna and Linda just got done with their piglets, we're trying to give them a little extra feed every day to get some weight back on them. So I put four piles of feed on the ground, and then for about the next five minutes, everybody goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to decide which pile they want to eat from. <laughs> Eventually, they usually pick a pile, and then I can go back and give Donna and Linda a little extra in their piles. Now, you guys, I want to address one thing that's been happening with this drought that we're in. You might notice that our pigs right now really don't have much grass at all in their pens. This is 100% because of the drought. In past years, believe it or not, when we've been getting a decent amount of rain, even with the pigs in here, I've had to been coming in here with a mower to mow the grass down because they can't keep up with eating it. 
But this year, because it got so hot and so dry so fast, the grass has just died, and right now the pigs just don't have much grass. This affects us in a few different ways. One, you know, it just doesn't give them good grass to eat. It also means we need to be giving them more feed every day, and with the price of feed going up, that makes things a little bit more difficult. Uh, we've actually decided to downsize our sows a little bit. So we've actually decided to sell Ginger, who is the reddish one over here. And she has a new home. She'll be going uh, sometime soon. We did this uh, now so that when we build our new pig pens down at the farm, we can take into consideration that we'll only be having the three sows and not four. So Ginger will be going to a new home and uh, we're excited to get the others moved down to the farm where they'll have bigger areas and hopefully even in the case of a drought uh, we'll be able to still have them on grass well good morning girls are you ready for breakfast too you are all right now these two pigs here these are the pigs that we're raising for our own meat consumption this year. We're actually raising one for my mom and dad and one for ourselves. They are growing out really, really well. And uh, they've actually been doing really well in this heat. We've been able to keep their weight down pretty good even in this heat. Last pig that we have is Charlie. Let's go see how he's doing this morning. Good morning, Charlie. Charlie is doing well. He has been struggling a little more in the heat, I think just because of his size, uh, but, um, but at least he has some shade here with these trees and we make sure he has a good wallow every day. Now, while Kevin is feeding my normal morning routine for the pigs, he has to get all their water pans out, rinse them out and then fill them up. And then after that, I make sure all of the wallows are filled for the day. Each of the pens has their own wallow uh, to make, you know, to keep the pigs cool. And it's been so hot that we've actually been doing this three times a day, making sure that they have enough cool water in their water pans and topping off all of their wallows. And they've been doing really well with this heat. I've been real surprised. We've been very worried about this heat with the pigs, but they're doing great. As long as they have wallow, cool water, and some shade, which all of them do, uh, they've been doing great. We're down at the farm property now. It's time to load out the chickens and the ducks. All right, we'll give the ducks their food. Now, whenever we do a video showing us feeding the ducks, we get a lot of comments about, you know, ducks need water when they're eating. You guys, the water for the ducks is about 20 feet that way. So uh, they have plenty of water. They're actually on an automatic waterer. They're plenty close to the water. Uh, in 10 years of raising ducks, we've never had a problem. So, uh, all right, let's let the ducks out. As you can see, we've downsized the amount of ducks that we have. We've gone down to just having uh, three of the Pekin females and one male. We did this so we can hatch out uh, full breed uh, Pekin ducks. And then we also have our two older silky chickens with them as well for right now. Eventually, these two silkies will go live with the younger silkies uh, so that we can move our Malines in here with the ducks. We'll try to explain that all better in a little bit. But for now, you can see we're down to just four ducks 
and these two silkies on this half of the chicken moat. All right, let's let out the breasts and the uh, malines. The breast chickens are about 18 weeks old now. Uh, they haven't started laying just yet. From what we read before we got them, they should start laying eggs at about 16 to 20 weeks. So we're still within that time frame. We're hoping that they're gonna lay soon. My gut tells me that it may take a little bit longer because of this heat, that this heat is just affecting all of the animals. And I wouldn't doubt that it's also gonna slow this down just a little bit. So we're not concerned yet. As you can see, we still haven't processed all of the extra roosters. You guys, again, with this heat, um, our goal is to you know, try to find a cool morning to do that, but by the time we're done with just our normal farm chores in the morning, which is usually between 9.30 and 10 o'clock, it's already approaching you know, 95 to 100 degrees, and it's just too hot to be out processing chickens. So for now, they get to keep living, uh, but we're excited to soon be able to process them so we can do our first taste test of the American breast chickens. Now I said before when we were over by the ducks about moving the uh, malines. The malines are those black chickens. Once they start laying eggs, we do plan on isolating the American breast chickens. So we're going to move the silkies in with the other silkies. We'll move the malines down with the ducks and then the breasts will be all by themselves. That way, when we're collecting eggs from all of the different pens, we know that they're only going to be pure with the breed that they're supposed to be. So we think that will be a good plan going forward. All right, so that's how the chickens and ducks are doing. Let's head over to uh, the new hoop coop that we just made so Sarah can give you an update on how her silky chicks are doing. Now, when I walk up to the silky hoop coop, you're gonna notice that we have two of our yearling calves up here. We have our bull yearling calf and um, a steer yearling back here. Uh, we have moved them here. Oh, it's a long story why, but <laughs> they're here so that we can number one, either sell them to a private owner or if they don't sell, they're going to the sale barn. So they are in the barn lot, the dairy barn lot for um, a week or two. We've got some hay for them because you guys, this area is out of grass basically. We are looking for owners for this bull and this steer. So if you're interested, um, just email us. We could give you more information and pricing information. Uh, they're doing great. They're actually limousine Hereford crosses. Their father was 100% limousine and their mothers are limousine Hereford cross. So they're mostly limousine, I would say. Okay, well, let's check on my fluffy little chickens in here. They are uh, really more comfortable than when we first put them in here. Uh, we did a video where we put them in here for the first time and they just huddled in a corner but they're doing really well and they are really having a good time in here. We're not quite sure yet all who are hens and all who are roosters, but we are just happy to have them they're so cute. They're having a good time in here, catching bugs and scratching around. And they really are enjoying the fresh air. They don't get a whole lot of sunshine, which is okay. They're in the shade all day long, which in this heat is much better for them. But they get to see outside and watch the cows. Uh, and they're just having a good time in here. Now, eventually we will let these chickens free range, but right now, they're still very small. They're easy targets. They don't know how to run under a bush to uh, take cover and protect themselves. Um, so that is our eventual plan. And even though these guys are cute, and I think that's pretty much why I have them, the cute factor, 
We do have them also because this breed goes broody, which means they want to hatch eggs. And that is something that we want to get into more is uh, the natural process of having chickens hatch eggs for us. So we don't have to necessarily rely on an incubator if we don't want to. These guys or these girls will be perfect at that. Well, let's go in by the rabbits. So in the rabbit area this summer, we have all of our breeders. Now, normally we will move the breeders out to rabbit tractors over the summer. This year, we've decided to keep them in the rabbit enclosure all summer long because you guys, it's just so hot. Rabbits struggle in the heat. It's best for them to be in the shade 100% of the time in the summer, especially this summer with the heat. In here, they are protected from the sun and there's a wonderful breeze that comes all the way through this area. We're also not breeding during this time of year. It's too hot to breed. Number one, the bucks go sterile once the weather is, or once the temperatures are over 80 degrees. And the does struggle so much in their pregnancy and delivery and their kits don't want to eat. Nobody wants to eat very much in this heat so they don't grow out very well. So this time of year, we just don't do any breeding. We'll probably start breeding again either in September or October, depending on the temperatures. Next up is the quail. You guys, uh, the quail have actually been doing pretty well in this heat. Now I do have fans that I run for them all day long and they are inside of the workshop. So they're pretty well protected. I open the windows of the workshop at night to cool the air down. And then when it starts to get hot out during the day, I shut them to try to, you know, kind of trap the cool air into the workshop and it's doing okay. Uh, they are struggling like everybody else, but I haven't lost any due to heat. Uh, so I really think that's about the best that I can ask for. I've downsized the quail a little bit, especially for the summer during this hot time. Um, I'm not sure if I'll scale back up in the winter or not, but for now I've kept just three cages full of breeders. Each cage has five females and one male. So I'm still getting about a dozen eggs a day out of the quail. Uh, that's for eating. And then when I'm hatching eggs, um, you know, I'm able to save eggs for about five or six days before I put them in the incubator. So I'm getting somewhere between, you know, 60 and 72 eggs each time I put them in the incubator, which has proven to be a good amount. So I've got, these are my breeders. I've downsized to just having the Jumbo Wilds and the Jumbo Egyptians. Um, and then I've also got some grow outs and some babies. So let's go take a look at those. So my grow out cage right now, I have, I don't know, I think about 25 young ones that will be ready to process. I already sold several groups of these uh, that were, you know, I was able to sex and then sell them as breeders. So the rest of these that are left will all be just for our own meat consumption. I'll probably be process processing these in the next week or so. They're just about old enough now. And then I do have uh, right now a group of young ones that are about uh, 10 or 12 days old. I've got about uh, 45 uh, that just hatched, like I said, about 10 days ago. Let me grab one out here for you guys. So you can see that these guys are doing well. Uh, they're starting to get their feathers. Um, they're right on schedule. So like I said, they're about 10 or 12 days old right now. I'll raise these until they are about four weeks old. At four weeks old, I should be able to sex them into groups. Any, uh, what I call five plus ones, five females and a male, I'll separate as many of those groups out as I can. Those I'll sell, and then any that can't fit into one of those groups is what I'll raise for our next round of meat. So that's kind of how I've been doing everything here with the quail. It's going well, and uh, the heat really hasn't been a big deal for the quail. Come here, babe. Did you just, do you come when I call your name? Cause it seems like it. Well, over here we have our two dairy cows, actually our dairy cow and heifer. And then we have held back one of the yearling steers to live with these guys until he is ready to go to the butcher. He'll be scheduled to be taken to the butcher next June. Uh, so he will feed our family then. Now, 
Rose is currently dry. We dried her up uh, for the summer. We're just having just a crazy summer um, and she needed a break. She was in milk for quite a long time. We are hoping that she is bred and that is one of the reasons why we put a steer back in here with them because he'll be able to show us whether or not she comes back into heat. Babe is going to be bred soon, uh, probably in the next heat cycle or two we'll have her bred. She is just old enough uh, to start that process and we're really excited uh, to get her pregnant and have a calf out of her. The last animal that we need to go look at today are our beef cattle. Now they are currently in what we call the back pasture, which is behind our hay field. I wanted to take just a second though to talk to you guys about hay. You know, on a good year, we will definitely get at least two cuttings of hay off of our hay field. This year, because of the drought, it's looking like we're probably only going to get one cutting of hay. Now, I'm actually a little pleasantly surprised when we drove out here this morning. Just even that little bit of rain that we got last night, which I'm guessing is less than a quarter inch, made this green up a little bit. But unless we catch up with rain in a big way, if we really, I mean, we need to get some good rains over the next several weeks. Um, I don't think we're going to be getting a second cutting of hay this year. We've been blessed with the fact that uh, for us, we got enough hay off of our first cutting of hay that we should be able to make it through the winter if we don't need to start feeding hay super early. But there are a lot of cattle farmers in our area who were not that blessed and uh, are having to start either selling off some of their cattle or making some hard decisions about what they're going to do to even keep their farms going. So if you guys could keep all of those farmers in your prayers, we'd appreciate that. It's a hard time when a drought like this hits uh, cattle country because if the grass isn't growing, uh, it makes life really hard. So we're going to jump in the UTV. We're going to go and we're going to check on the cattle. We're going to see if we can find everybody this morning. But you guys, when we get back there by the cattle, you'll probably notice how dry even the standing grass is. It's almost like standing hay right now more than grass. And that's just because we've got such hot temperatures and such little rain. So let's jump in the UTV and go for a ride. All right, well, we found all of the cattle. Looks like everybody's doing well back here. They do have a lot of standing grass or standing hay back in this area yet. This was the very last pasture that we'd kind of set aside for them. We do rotational grazing, so they've been, you know, we've been rotating. This pasture, they haven't been on really since last fall. So they have a lot of grass back here to eat. Tex is enjoying being back with his ladies for the summer. Um, I've been seeing him do his job, so that's good. We did end up, uh, I don't know if we ever gave you guys a final total on how many calves we had this year. As you know, we have 10 cows, and this year we had 10 calves. So uh, Tex did his job, he got every single cow pregnant last year, and every single one of them had a calf this year. So we are super excited about that. The other exciting news is that we had four heifer calves born this year, and those we will be holding back as permanent residents. That brings the number of female cattle that we have that will be living here full time between cows and heifers up to 15, which is what we wanted. We think that's about the max that we want on our property. So we'll have 15 cows eventually that we'll be breeding every year. And then we have all of the calves and, and techs. And so uh, it's a lot of mouths to feed, but I think our property can handle it, especially on a good year when the grass actually grows. Now the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the ponds here on the property. Uh, our big pond, which we showed you guys in the past, it is still doing okay even in this drought, although it is down a couple feet, I would say, in the, in the water level. But in like our back pasture here, you may not be able to see it real well, but over here near Tex, there is a pond. Except right now, it's just a hole in the ground. There's not a single drop of water in that pond. 
Uh, same with the pond that we have in our hay field and the one up near our barn. That one still has a little bit, but not much. You may remember that last year we ran water lines around the homesteads for all of the animals that are up near the house and the barn. We weren't going to run water all the way back to this back pasture because it was a good almost 1,500 feet, I think, to run it back here. And at the very last minute while the guy was here with the big machine that can install it underground, I said to him, let's go ahead and run one hydrant to this back pasture because I'm worried about the pond going dry. You guys, that turned out to be a great decision because I'm now able to have a water tank back here for them so that uh, they don't have to seek out water. Um, like I said, the pond is dry. There is a small spring back here, but it's not easy to get to even for the cattle. So by having a water tank back here, uh, it has just made life much easier and it makes us much more comfortable having the cows back here. So that is how all of the animals on the homestead are doing, you guys. As you can see, we got our work cut out for us every single day with animals, but we absolutely love having all of these animals on the homestead. You guys, if you are enjoying our videos, make sure that you hit that subscribe button below. And as always, the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.